Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to uh, Sermon Link. I'm Pastor Larry Brown. And as always, this is a ministry of Powell United Methodist Church. And I welcome you to our uh, coming together around our scripture for this week. And uh, just glad that you're here with us. As you can see, the passage is out of uh, the Old Testament, the very first book of the Bible, Genesis. And we're going to be um, coming into the narrative around Abraham. Uh, but the key here is to realize that initially in his stories, uh, he is known as Abram. Abram. And we're going to talk about that. I want to make sure you know I'm not mispronouncing his name. Uh, it's an intentional name change for him. And that's, in fact, key to what the scripture wants us to be aware of. So let's jump in and, and hear the reading. And then we'll reflect on it for just a few moments. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations, and no longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you, throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan, for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. And then moving to verse 15. God said to Abraham, And as for Sarai, your wife, she will not, you will not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. And as we say, that, that is the end of the reading. It's the end of the reading, but it's certainly not the end of the story or the impact of this story as it uh, speaks to us today. So I mentioned that focus on the name change, and that really is one of the key components here. Abram, as he's first introduced to us in these stories of Genesis, is called by God to go and establish a home and a place for his family in the land that will ultimately be what's referred to as the promised land, the land that God is giving to God's people. And as a part of that process, uh, the promise of God is that Abram will be uh, a father of many. And the problem with that is Abram's getting old and no son has been born. And so as the story progresses, Abram becomes increasingly concerned as time goes on and he ages and his wife ages that they are now well beyond the childbearing years. And yet God reassures Abram I promise you'll be the father of many. And that kind of um, movement back and forth between God's affirmation and Abram's frustration and doubt continues until here in chapter 17, when once more Abram's about ready to just give it up. He's 99 years old after all. And so obviously this promise of God is, is just hollow sounding words. And yet God comes again and says, I am going to fulfill my promise. You'll be the father of many. In fact, from now on, you'll be known as Abraham. That name in the Hebrew means father of many or father of the nations. So Abram's identity now is deeply tied to what it is God intends to do. And Sarah, well, that change of name there is another indication of God placing identity upon Sarah, who will be the mother of the nations, and saying that while all of this seems impossible to you, God is saying all things are possible with me, and God's purpose will be fulfilled. And uh, so in the flow of this story, 
there is, of course, a word for us. And that is, have you ever got to the place in your life where you thought you were beyond hope? <laughs> or that God thought you were beyond hope? And what does this story say to us? There's no limit to what God can do. There's no place that we find ourselves. There's no reality of our life situation that is ever beyond God's capability to gather up whatever it is we have, whoever we are, whatever we can offer, and then from that make something life-giving come. And the, the key of this whole thing is that we are, by way of our faith, partners with God in what God is wanting to accomplish in our lives and in the world. Abraham, that name change, solidified the fact that who he was, his very identity, was now a part of this relationship with God. In fact, that relationship God describes as covenant that it's not just something God's going to do and we sit around and wait for it. It's a covenant that involves God's faithfulness, our faithfulness, and in that partnership, in a sense, we are changed. Our identity becomes transformed such that we become partners with God, vehicles for God, um, channels through which God brings God's purposes and the fulfillment of God's promises, not only just into our lives, but extends that into the world. I love that part of the story, how the blessing for Abraham becomes a blessing for many. That's the way God works in our lives too. So throughout this Lenten season, uh, especially this week, as we reflect on this story, be aware of how it is God continues to call you and desires to work through you and how it is God can gather up whatever is in you and then Make it such that you're a partner with God in bringing forth the goodness of God, the blessing of God. We talk about it in the sense of the love and the grace and the peace and hope of God that comes to us, and then we offer that to others. We're a blessing to others as well. So be encouraged in all of that. Uh, so appreciate you ch checking in and being with us uh, again here on Sermon Link. We'll be here every week. Uh, you know that and look forward. Hey, give us a like or share. Boy, that really helps to extend our message and our, and our outreach. And, and we so appreciate your partnership in making that possible. For now, friends, take care. We'll sign off and we will see you again very, very soon. Uh, for now, take care. Bye.